Make a movie, they say. They say. Have a good time making that movie, they say. They say. Get your cast. Get your crew. Get your cameras, they say. They say. Go to the editing room. <laughs> Cry. <laughs> Cry for weeks, months, almost a year on end. Think about how many times you want to delete the entire project, start over. They do not say. No. But today, we say. Good morning from the in-between. So we're back. Hey. For another episode. Part four of four, don't worry, it's the last one, of it Making is. of the Angler, it is. our beautiful monster and film. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we will touch upon the last part of this process. The most painstaking and horrifying of all of them. The one that took the longest. The one that made us uh, question whether or not we actually wanted to be filmmakers. Whether or not we would be sitting in these seats right here. And that process happens to be post-production, better known as editing. So you would think that once you're done filming, the majority of the work on the film is over. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. You're wrong. You Everyone's just, wrong. You just put the clips together, put the music on, and it's done, right? Yeah. Wrong. Oh, sorry. I thought it was going to be done the day after you shot it. No. Wrong. Oh, sorry. So sorry. What happens instead is that you have to go and you have to do so many things that you did not think that you would have to do at all. And uh, the, the, the pile just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And there's more shots that you have to reshoot. And there's sounds that you have to design. And there's music that you have to make. And there's edits that you have to make and there's coloring that you have to do and all of that takes a really long time so this is less of a behind the scenes episode it's more of a therapy session for the two of us very necessary it just took a long time and you know there's only the two of us in that editing room my bedroom aka mm. and it's been a long time but we're here and we're gonna dive in yeah hopefully you stay home for the ride so the first travesty we had to deal with was uh, the sound. So you take the footage, you take the audio from the shooting days, you put it in the computer, put it in the editing software, and see how it looks and sounds. Yeah. And and it, it sounded like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't sound great because... Remember last episode? Yeah, we talked about a little bit. Uh, we talked a little bit about this little waterfall that was right next to the uh, the set that we were on, and uh, it caused some complications. It was like, uh, you know, a little bit like... The entire time. So all of our audio was like, <laughs> you know, so it was really rough, really rough. It was creeping in. You know, we used um, lavalier microphones that we strapped to the actor's chest mm -hmm. right here under their clothes so you couldn't see it. And we also used a regular boom arm, uh, like a boom shotgun mm -hmm. mic. So we could double up either way. Yeah, I heard it on both. <laughs> So one of the things that we did to combat this was we used a few denoisers and, uh, you know, I'm going to let Mike talk about this one because he was the one that mostly took the, uh, took the initiative and learned new processes that would ultimately save our butts on the sound. I just slapped what felt like five different effects on each clip, hoping it would sound better so I could... Once preserve the voice that we were hearing, but also eliminate that background noise. So mm. it was a lot of denoiser, de hum, de crapify mm. the audio mm -hmm. that we had. Mm. So it was less of a process I went through, but more of just like a figure out how the hell to get rid of all the mm -hmm. in the background. Mm -hmm. Piss off, I know what I saw. Piss off, I know what I saw. Piss off, I know what I saw. That's a nice D DIY how-to tip for you right there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's going to be able to take all of that and really no apply it to their craft. <laughs> One of the other things that we did is we, we overlaid a ridiculously large amount of uh, environmental noises, such as birds and wind. Oh my God, the amount of wind that we implied in this movie just to get rid of some of those, like... And we just go. Like, if, I think 75% of the movie has some windy bits. There was not even a little bit of wind on set at all. We were just, here, have some wind, have some wind, have some yeah. wind. Have another beer. Maybe next time you see him, it'll be a full 30. Have another beer. Maybe next time you see him, it'll be a full 30. Have another beer. Maybe next time you see him, it'll be a full 30. 
So we really had to amp up the environment to take away from the poor sounding uh, dialogue audio. Hmm. <clears throat> so I think that ultimately it worked pretty well. I think so. Um, you can hear what they're saying for the most part. Yeah, we took out what we could, and uh, I don't think it was like in our budget for us to like go back to the lake and redo everything. No, it was impossible, actually. So once we had this sound in a manageable place, uh, one of the things that I really didn't like about our first pass on the movie was our nature shots that we opened up the movie with. Um, there were some bugs some other bugs and a frog. a frog there were a little little animals that we we had at the beginning of the movie to open up and give you the feel of the lake and the surrounding area but they weren't doing it for me so we went back to the lake and painstakingly did our little national geographic shoot and got some sick shots of some animals if i do say so myself one of these shots, we actually didn't even get at the lake. We got it at Mike's house. And I'm going to let him take this away again because this was, this was all him. Good old birdie shot, right? Mm, mm -hmm. So, it would be awesome if we can get a shot of the birds, right? Mm. Like, be sick as opposed to... Like, just, a bunch of birds in the shot. Just, just some, get a bunch of birds. Like, all we have are insects right now. So, I was like, you know, birds come around my back door all the time. Good to know. Not my butt, the back door of the porch. Uh, anyways... <laughs> So, my mom likes to feed them a lot. They got a lot of bird food. Mm. Pounds of it. So, I took that little little tidbit and I set up a mini set. It was it was ultimately on, a on top of the grill. A recreation of the surrounding woods. So, mm -hmm. I took tarp, covered the grill. I put I got like some a, dirt. A bucket of dirt, put it on top of the tarp, and then I took sticks, leaves, mm. little twigs, yeah. put it right on top, make it look like the surrounding area mm -hmm. of the lake. I put some little bird food on the ground in the dirt. And set up that camera for about like nine hours straight. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. Yeah, so I shot right out my, my back window, and I was able to get close. And then we pretty much took three to four different shots, stitched all them together, and that's how we have the final shot with all, what, four birds? Yeah. None of the birds that you see in that shot are actually interacting with one another. They are all separate plates that we combined to make this beautiful shot with four birds. And it looks awesome. I'm sure if you're like someone who goes birding or whatever, you'd be like, those birds would never sit next to each other because they have territorial disputes, blah, blah, blah. Listen, we tried. We got the birds to sit together, even though they never sat together, okay? Get over it. It's a cool looking shot, isn't it, bruv? Yeah, I absolutely love it, bruv. Nice job. So one other wildlife shot we had to grab was uh, a shot that comes up a little bit later in the film than the rest of the uh, animals and whatnot. Um, and that was the worm shot. We, uh, we got a bunch of worms and they did this. Another similar setup, put a tarp down, yep. grabbed a bunch of dirt, and you grab a It was actually worms. like February, and I was like, how are we going to do this worm shot? Like, there's no worms in February. You would just... They're still there. They're just pretty deep into the ground. So I dug a big hole, and I found a lot of worms. And uh, then we poured some, like, warm water on them, and they went... Wah! And then, and you have worms. And then you, you have worms. Shot. You got a worm shot. It was wonderful. Uh, no worms were hurt in the making of this uh, film. We put them all right back in the earth and we covered them up real nice. So I think, uh, yeah, we, we did a good job, but we got the worm shot. We got the shot. We got the worms. Looks like it was at the lake. Yeah. He, he goes, ah. and then you, you cut to the insert. And you cut back. And you wouldn't know. You look at the you worms. You wouldn't know. Another example of an insert we had to get was the bobber shot. I love that shot. In scene two, Joseph and I, good old Joseph, and I took to the to the lake yet again. Huzzah! And we, uh, you know, Joe was out in his kayak. He got a really close-up bobber shot. It made it look like it was shot when we were there. Yeah. Not much to it, but we had to get it. Nice story, bro. That was sick, right? <laughs> 
We also had to get a few more shots of the angler after we had already wrapped on principal photography. We didn't really get that much time to experiment with it, get cool, unique, close-up shots of it because on set we had talent, we were running out of time. There was a lot of aspects going on that uh, contributed to us not getting the shots that we really wanted of the angler. So, after all that was done, we grabbed a smaller crew, we set up behind my house, and we got some really beautiful inserts of the teeth. This was when Lube Master Trevor was on set, and we really, really lubed up the... Yeah, lube... One more. One more for Lube Master Trevor. Ha! We got the inserts. They looked really cool. And that was that. That's it! That's it! So now moving on to the meat, the, the creme de la creme, the problem. What did we have to do, so how, how could we finish the movie, make it look and sound better? We had to edit. We had to edit. We had to edit our life away for an entire year. I had so many mornings where I would wake up hopeful yep. that today was going to be the day that we were going to be done editing. And some of those mornings were quite literally months away from the day that we actually finished editing. So it happened for about 90 days, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. I was okay, like, cool. today's the day. We're really going to be done. Yeah. Today, No, today's the day. We're really going to be done. Today is it. A week from now, we, we're going to be done, I swear. We're going to be done. We shot the movie in September. We released the movie next October. Oh, A full year. I, I truly and honestly thought that this movie was going to take us maybe two months to edit. Maybe max two months. So, a large part of why it took so long was sound design. Sound design. There's a lot to cover up, like we stated earlier. Mm. A lot of band-aid duct tape to smack over a, a flooding dam. Mm. So, um, you know, Flex Seal! We did what we could, <laughs> you know? So, sprinkle all the little bit of elements for the un environmental nature-y stuff. Um, the angler itself took a minute, which we'll dive into in a little bit, but... You know, the environment, wind, the, 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 the birds, the birds, the birds, the birds, the birds. Another aspect of the sound design that we really didn't even consider was the soundtrack. Uh, we had to compose and record an entire soundtrack for this movie without any knowledge of music theory whatsoever. I mean, yeah, we could have hired somebody, but what's the fun in that? We wanted to figure out everything on our own. Right? Yeah, yeah, why not? Pile it on! Pile it on! Exactly! So that's what we did. And uh, I used a Rolly Seaboard, which is a uh, lovely little MIDI device that... Um, has a silicone overlay so you can get notes that don't actually exist on a normal piano. And that was probably the most helpful uh, tool that we had in composing the soundtrack. It was not effortless, but as soon as we figured out the chord progression that we wanted to go with, it kind of was just variations on that chord progression throughout the film. So so we had a theme, and then we stuck with that theme. You know, like Jaws has a da na 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 The angler has a da na 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 So, you know, it was pretty cool. It was cute. It was whatever. The other sounds we had to create, or Foley, if you will, make aka making sounds from scratch. Yeah. Uh, we, were, we were fully artists for a couple days there. We we did a lot of things, such as... Uh, we had to do car noises. Drove around my neighborhood getting car noises. Mm. We had to recreate water droplets. I used my bathtub. You also used your pool. I also used my pool for a lot of the drip drops with the angler mm. coming out of the water. We had to recreate every footstep that was ever in this movie. Anytime that anyone took a step in the movie, guess what? We had to recreate that sound because for some reason, footsteps you get on the day don't sound like footsteps in the movie. So you got to get all the footsteps all over again. Every goddamn footstep. Every footstep. Every time someone took a step, we had to re-record that sound. But also because of the... <laughs> Yeah, well, but not all the time. Sometimes it was just, you know, the footsteps didn't sound right. Like, yeah. We gotta, we gotta, I gotta do, put on some boots and step around. Oh, some guy fell on the floor? Let me throw myself on my deck a hundred times. 
the most fun that we had while we were doing sound design definitely came from the angler portion of things because like we said we had to do a bunch of water drops to make it sound like it was coming out of the water but we also had to come up with the noise that the angler would make because we didn't want a silent fishy dude we wanted a, a scary fishy dude do that do that do that do that do that loud do that fishy dude oh that defeats the whole purpose <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that we did was we were like well what kind of animals make really cool noises that look a little bit or function a little bit like the angler the first noise that we laid in was a killer whale um and then that was followed by a crocodile and then that was followed by an elephant and then that was followed by a gecko and then that was followed by a cane toad and then that was followed by a tiger and then that was followed by me i made some noises for the angler i was like you know i made some i made some i made some noises um there's popeye in the back yeah there were a lot of different noises that we layered on top of each other in order to get the tremendous super creepy sound that the angler end up ends up emitting from its face hole there's a lot to it we then took those sounds pitched them down Throw some reverb, mm. echo on there to make a great hall sound even more spooky. Mm. Great hall. Like, That's a great effect. You throw it on anything, it makes it sound like it's in a great hall, which we weren't, but sounds great. It, yep. So once we figured that all out, got all those sounds, mushed them all together, reverbed, great hauled, pitched, unpitched, depitched, repitched, we uh, we got we got to a place where it fully transformed this puppet into a living, breathing nightmare. Watch this, watch this clip right here. It'll terrify you, I promise. So, I don't know about you, but that sounded pretty cool to me. And during that scene, you might notice there are some dog barks in the background. And, you know, you probably thought, Logan being the goodest boy he is, that was him. Even though he is the goodest boy. He's, he's too good of a boy. He's yeah. so good of a boy that he doesn't bark at all. Not yeah. even when faced with a gigantic monstrous puppet does this doggo bark. So, I had to go to my neighbor's house. Hey, um, hey, Indy. Little Indy. Can we get some, um... Barks of yours? And she says, Bark, bark. We got him. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we had one dog play another dog that's voiced by a third dog. Right. Incredible. So, got her done. Remember last video when I said, Shooting at the lake won't be a problem. If we get there early on a Saturday, it won't be that many people. No people. Wrong. Mm. There were plenty of kayaks, people, boating, doing their thing on when the When we did our last shot of the whole entire film, there was a total of 30 people on the dock right next to us. I'm blasting music to the point where we had to like completely reconstruct the sounds that um, we were getting on set and had Guy, our main principal actor, uh, re-record all of his lines in post because uh, Despacito is playing. Don't worry, bud. I've got you. Always. Don't worry, bud. I got you. Always. People are gonna jam the best exactly at the lake, like we didn't intend for, but um, that required a lot of masking. I had to go into a lot of the clips mm. on the dock of the water um, and paint out pretty much cut out all the people in the kayaks, people doing the stuff on the water, and make it look like it was a nice, desolate lake. And I think it turned out pretty good. There were other times that we had to mask our actors even because uh, there would be takes where 
maybe one of them accidentally turned the other way and we wanted them facing each other. So we would cut that entire clip in half, drag a clip from where they were facing the correct way and just overlay them on top of each other. So there are times where our principal actors are speaking to each other and neither one of those shots were happening at the same time. But we made it happen. We did the thing. We did the thing. And lastly, you were puppeteering... Joanna, correct? I was, I was. I was behind that beautiful beast over there. In some shots, you saw Soul. Yeah. Doing the... So, we had to cut them out. We had to darken those spots. And just another, you know, work around. We had to work around. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I do. I do know. I was there. Hell yeah, you were puppeteering that baby so damn well. Mm. Good stuff. Mm. My very... So one of the final aspects of editing is to make your film look as pretty as possible. And one of the ways in which you do that is you recolor the film um, with some with some preset LUTs in our in our case because, you know. Yeah. Uh, what is a LUTs? What is a LUTs, Mike? It's a lookup table. It's pretty much you're applying almost a preset of colors or a look to existing footage. Mm -hmm. And you can tweak that preset to go in whatever way you want mm -hmm. it to go. So a lot of our footage had some, you know, gray tones to it that was a little washed out or the greens weren't as vibrant as we wanted. So, you know, what we did, we just took those greens and we went, hey, let's have a little bit more of that green. Make, or make a pop, pop, pop. Yeah, a little pop, 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 pop. Let, let's, let, oh, that, that ladybug? That, that's a beautiful ladybug, but we can make it pop, pop, pop. more beautiful. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, that's great. Yeah, pop, 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 pop. pop. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's what we did to every single shot in the movie. We altered the colors and made it look like one cohesive thing that was shot all at the same exact time, even though it was shot over various days with various lighting conditions. And, uh, and that's the point of coloring, is that you get to choose exactly what you want your film to look like. And uh, I think we did a pretty cool job. So another part of the process, you know, in order for us to come back to reality so we're not stuck in the editing room for hours on end we did a little poster shoot we we're gonna make the posters for the movie the posters i love the posters for this movie yeah so the yeah. live action one we did right in soul's driveway mm -hmm. pretty much propped up joanna on a big ladder and i played the part of ralph or Mur, i guess because Mur's the one at the end holding the the lantern um you know your characters i don't really you wrote it <laughs> <laughs> i wrote the movie and i still have no idea what their names are so um we did that we, yeah we used the fog machine make it look spooky spooky mm -hmm. came out great and then you want to talk about memons yeah so there's this artist that i've been following on instagram for a very long time now his handle is second at best um and his name is matt emons um and he put up a little thing on his Instagram story one day and it said, hey, just throwing this out into the ether. If any little indie projects involving monsters need a poster, especially a movie or a video game, let me know because I would love to get into the poster game. And I was like, wait a minute, he's talking to me. He's talking to me specifically right now because mm -hmm. we're a little indie guy, we're a little indie guy and we need a poster for our movie, mm -hmm. and there's a monster in our movie. So I shot him a quick DM, and I was like, hey, here's the design for our monster from our monster movie. Let me know if you want to work on this poster. And he was immediately hitting me up in the nicest ways possible um, with uh, concept sketches, a full work through of the poster before we even got to the final design. And... Mm -hmm. Uh, just what a pleasure to work with Mr. Memons, mm -hmm. in, in my opinion. If you guys are interested at all, you should go check out his comic books. Uh, mm. One being Gardener, which is a beautiful comic book about a um, sci-fi uh, farming district that went awry in some capacity. And then you've got um, Council of Frogs, which is his... His newest comic book, which is just absolutely darling. Um, I pre-ordered it. It's, it looks so fantastic, and we can't wait to read it. Shout out to Memons, uh, second at best. Matt Emons, we love you very much. Thank you so much for doing the poster for our film. It came out beautifully. So much more beautifully than we could have ever expected. Truly. We are going to put all the socials and contacts up down in the description.
We appreciate you, Memons. So once we had our posters and our movie all finished up, we were able to then submit to some film festivals. Oh my God, it's done. It's done. <laughs> we we what's it's done? It's done. It's done. We, we did it. Choke me just now. No, I I was going. What? Hug? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's nice. That's good. Human contact mm. is nice. We got through it. Yeah, we did. We did the whole thing. And then uh, once we were on the other side of it, we submitted to some pretty dope festivals to which we are waiting their reply currently because we got in early um, so that we could um, have some like early bird fees. And now we wait. Now we wait. But it's very difficult to put into a short video like this one how many... Hours, how yeah. many hours of painstaking focus it took to create this film. And then that's the movie. All right. We did the movie. The movie. I'd like to thank uh, no one. I don't really know if we, we, we got across what a tremendous undertaking the editing process was, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this little look into uh, that process nonetheless, um, because we enjoyed talking about it. Like Mike said, we needed a little therapy session after all of those days in the dark editing room. Um, it probably feels like a lot of word vomiting, a lot of nonsense is coming out. Yeah. That's what we had to go through. A lot, yeah. of, nonsense. A lot of nonsense. A lot of stuff that came our way, had to work around, had to pivot. Like we said last episode, mm. it just didn't stop until the very end. Mm. So, we have made it to the other side. Yeah. We are moving on to the next project. <laughs> Well, you know, whether it be two and whatever short film is coming up next, we've learned a lot in we this have. process. We have learned a lot, and we are going to take all those things we learned and move them on into the next project, and hopefully the editing session for that won't take a year. Hopefully it'll get easier and easier with each film. I doubt it. Hey, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, okay? Little guy. <laughs> you love little guy. That's a new one now. Oh, I love little guy. <laughs> <laughs> To everyone watching, just want to send you a sincere and happy whatever it is you're celebrating this season. There's a lot to be grateful for, and there's a lot of lovely to go around. So cherish your time with your loved ones, and we will be seeing you next week at what day, what time? I think it's going to be a Wednesday at 9 a.m. Yes. So everybody stay lovely, stay warm, and we will see you then. <laughs> Ta-ta. Bye now. So dumb, but... <laughs> <laughs>